Hi, welcome to the testing world. In this session, we are going to cover basics of Groovy. So first, we need to cover what is variable. Variables are used to hold some data. Value of the variable can be changed. In while working with the Groovy, we need not to define the data type of the variable. We just need to mention def. Def is a keyword and then variable name. So I'm, so, uh, I'm creating a new test case. TC003. In the test case, I'm going to the test steps, right click, add a step, and here we have Groovy test step. So let me check. It's a Groovy script test step. I mentioned Groovy script. So here is the editor where we can write Groovy script. So to define a variable, we are using def, which is a keyword, and then variable name. So I mentioned like text percentage. While declaring a variable, it's up to us. Text data. So it's up to us. Like we need to define the initial value of the variable or not. So here I have created two variables. One is just the variable name. We did not give any, we did not give any uh, initial value. And other one, here we have given some initial value as well. Uh, the GUI is quite similar to the Java, but a uh, few differences like uh, we need not to write the semicolon at the end of the each line. The, the next thing is that the comments. So we have the two kind of command. It's a single line command, which is created by the double slash and multi-line command. It is quite similar to the Java. So moving here, <coughs> if I want to create a single line command, then double slash means this line is commented. If you want to create the multi-line command, we can go by this. So multi-line command is started and the place where we want to end this multi-line command, then I'm going here, start this. Here we have created multi-line command. Moving to my slides again. So we have covered what is variable, how to create a variable in Groovy. Now moving to the comments. So I have created, you know, single line and multi line comment. Moving to the condition handling. So we can use if else or if else is and then else. So here in that case, first we are going to cover if else and then we are going to cover if else if. If we have the multiple conditions, then multiple else if and at the end else. So moving to the Groovy step again. Here I have defined a variable which is 199. I'm going to write a program. So I mentioned like double slash. This is this program. This to check even and odd number. So I'm checking like if this variable mode by 2 mode is used to find out the reminder so I set I'm setting if the variable mode by 2 is equal to 0 here you can use I'm using the double equal to double equal to is used to compare the value single equal to is used to assign a value so I'm going to if the condition is satisfied then I need to print something on the logs to print something on the log, I just mentioned log.info. Log.info, this is even value. And in the else, I just mentioned log.info, this is odd value. So we, here we have defined, you know, Two variables or oh sorry here we have defined a variable 
we are checking that variable mod by 2 if it's equal to 0 then this is an even value as it's a so making it correct like uh, here we have this is even value and this is odd value i'm running this and here it's showing this is the odd value because it's 199 i'm changing the value like 201 and i'm trying to run it again and here we check it's again odd value i'm taking even value this time 200 zero zero. and now it shows this is the even value means my program is working fine in next program we are going to use if else if and then else so i just mentioned if else if and then else so what i'm going to do first i'm checking if the value of i is less than uh, less than zero just need to mention this is a negative value if it is not a negative value then i'm checking else if i mod by 2 double equal to 0 if it is a non-negative value then i'm checking is this even so i mentioned log dot info this is even value and at the end if it's not negative it's not even so i mentioned that's it odd value so here we have covered like it will check first the value is negative yes then it will display this information else it will check it again if it's a non-negative value then check it is this a you know even value if yes then this part will be executed else my else section will be executed here we can check it is showing like i clear it again and you know run it again here this is an even value i try to you know test other scenarios like minus three or minus four so it's checking and giving the negative value i take another example in which uh, 399 so it should display a odd value here we are getting odd value i clear this result and run it again this time we are getting odd value so we have covered condition handling by using if else or if else if else if can be placed multiple times if we have the multiple conditions and then else moving to the next section we are going to cover few loops so first loop that i am going to cover is the for loop i will create a program here for the for loop we are going to you know use the same syntax that we have either in a c c++ or java so i'm using like i'm defining a variable which is i then for i is equal to 1 initial condition of the loop i is less than or equal to 10 so it will execute 10 times i++ plus plus means every time it will increase the value by 1 this is the body of the loop and here what i'm doing i'm just printing log.info value of the i i'm running it and here we can see it shows all the values i'm clearing the previous result and then i'm running it it shows the one two three four means all the ten values so for loop syntax it's quite similar to that we have in java in c or c plus plus i'm moving to the next loop which is a while loop so going to while loop which is similar to java c or c plus plus so i mentioned here def i is equal to one giving the initial value then we are using while i is less than or equal to 10 and here I print this value so log.info and i and I need to increase the value every time so I mention i++ here we can see we are not using semicolons 
I'm just running it again and here we can see we are getting the result. So for and while syntax it's quite similar to syntax we are using in C, C++ and Java. Even we have seen condition handling, the condition handling was, syntax was similar to C, C++ and Java. So moving to next section in which we are going to create some array. So first we need to understand what is array. So I'm moving to the while and then array. So array can hold multiple data of the similar data type. We have the two different ways to define an array. So def arr whatever the name you want to give for the array. Yes, I'm I'm putting an array over here. So I'm giving the name of the array is arr is equal to square bracket whatever the values we want to put in the array we have just mentioned that so here we have the three values in an array we can pick the value by its index so log dot info arr i just mentioned the index one because indexing starting from the zero so zero and then one so we should get in result 53 so I clear the previous results and then I'm running so it shows 53. So one way to define array in which we are uh, you know uh, giving all the values while defining the array. The other way to create array is to def arr is equal to new the type of the data it's going to hold. So I mentioned int, it's integer data, the size of the array. Now we can define the value like on 0 index it will be 10, on 1 index it will be 20, 2 index it will be 30 and 3 index it will be 40. While accessing the value or while picking the value we can just mention the index like log.info arr and I want to pick the value at the index 2. So here it should display 30 in the result. I'm clearing the previous results and then I'm running it. So in the result you can see we are getting 30. One more loop which I'm going to cover is the for each loop. For each loop is mainly used when we are working on the arrays or the list means it can be used only when we have the multiple data. So here in the array we have the four data. For each syntax is like that for each value which is placed in an array. So I'll explain it just to mention first. So I'm you know writing the code and then I'll explain it. So what I'm doing, I pass def a means I'm creating a variable colon and then array name means we are declared. Syntax is that we are declaring a, a variable a and then colon and then array name. How it's going to work? It will pick a value from the array and then display it. So it will execute automatically the number of times which is equal to the length of the array. Means it will go to the array and until unless it is getting the value in the array, it will pick the value and display it. So in my array, we have the four values. So it will execute four times and we'll get all the values. So I clear the previous results, just running it. Here you can see it is displaying all the values. The for each loop, this is the for each loop and we need not to confuse because, you know, uh, in, in syntax, in syntax, we are not going to get the each keyword. Keyword is same as for, just to define a variable, then colon, and then list or the array. So it will pick the value from the array and will display it. It will automatically execute the number of time which is equal to the length of the array. So these are the three loops that we have covered is the for, while, and for each. So thanks for watching this video and if you want to know more about us, you can go to www.thetestingworld.com. Thanks for watching this video.